up everybody it's your boy nugs b and i just want to give a shout out to all of the sponsors of hashtag together ftr the first sponsor i want to give a big shout out to today is advanaclean of the tri-state ran by joel and pam dooley advanaclean of the tri-state provides essential indoor air quality services to residential and commercial customers things like mold removal water damage, dryer vent cleaning, and air duct cleaning. Give them a call for a free estimate today at 606-331-5001. And that's 606-331-5001. Go ahead, if you're on Facebook, head over to their Facebook page at Clean of the Tri-State. Give them a like. Be sure to share their page, send them a message, and say Taylor sent you. And if you need to go to their commercial location, you can find them at 4446 13th Street, Ashland, Kentucky. And the second sponsor today is a great friend of mine. He is seriously, hands down, top two sculptors I know personally. And his name is Wyatt Freeman, W Y A T T. F-R-E-E-M-A-N. Look him up on Facebook. He's a sculptor, painter. He can draw. And just a great person all around. You can find him on Facebook, as I said. He is somebody I am recommending today that you need to get with as soon as possible to get some commissioned art. He charges a very reasonable price and can do pretty much anything you need and will work with you very attentively. Shout out to you, Wyatt. Keep it weird, friends. Let's go ahead and get this episode started. Oh, oh. It's for the record, son. Yeah. Yeah. It's for the... It's for the record. I said it's for the... It's for the record. Yeah, boy, it's for the... It's for the record. And we all are... We all do. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Nugs B coming to you with episode 38 for the record. Hashtag together FTR. I am joined by Lambo. How What's you doing up? today? You doing all right, bro? Doing great, bro. Doing Having great. Having a good day? Oh, yeah. Always. Always working. Always grinding. Always. Right. Kool Aid, you doing great? Doing awesome, man. Glad Living to hear, life. bro. Shout out to my dude's hat because it is extra dope and you all love it. Do not start hating. We don't want to hear none of Richie. that, son. We don't. <laughs> we don't want to hear none of that, son. Um, so, anyways, we're gonna kick this one off as usual with entertainment history. So, September eleventh, nineteen eighty-seven, reggae musician Peter Tosh is shot and killed at age forty-two during a robbery in his home. Uh, and if you haven't heard of Peter Tosh, one of my favorite songs by him is "Wanted, Dread, or Alive." It's actually on Pineapple Express when they're running away, uh, when they just found out that uh, Ted Jones was looking for them. Yep. Uh, James Franco and Seth Rogen, their characters are running away, and that song is playing. So if you haven't uh, heard that song, definitely go check it out. Wanted, Dread, or Alive. I, I think, you know, with him so many times, people, you, you say reggae, they, it always goes Bob Marley. Always, bro. Nobody like, shouts and, out Peter Tosh. Peter you know? Tosh is, is right there with him, mm-hmm. if not a little bit above. You know, there's so many other, Jimmy Cliff, you know, just oh, so yeah. many good reggae artists, and everybody oh, always yeah. just think about Bob Dylan. Or Bob, <laughs> for real, Bob Dylan. Bob Marley. Bob Marley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bob Dylan's a great reggae singer. Yeah. He's the funkiest of the bunch, yeah, yeah. you know? <laughs> Gee, it's been a long That's day. That's hilarious. Uh, but anyway, so September 11th, 1967, Frank Sinatra, who is playing at the Sands Casino in Las Vegas, gets in a fight when he is denied credit as part of a policy put in by the new owners. He breaks two teeth in the altercation and soon takes his talents and money to Caesar's Palace. So we were just talking about, you know, before we got on air, how awesome, you know, uh, Frank Sinatra is. 
and yeah. uh, we all agreed that we all started liking him from a movie. Yeah. You know, and I thought that was really, really cool. What's the movie that made you think of him, Kool-Aid, like that really got you into him? Casper. Whenever <laughs> the whenever the dad and cat are on their way to the mansion. Yeah. You, they're playing the, I can't remember the exact song, but I know it's Sinatra yeah. in the car. Yep. For sure. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, dude. The first Casper was so awesome. Really, really good. And then they made the second one with uh, Lizzie McGuire. Uh, her real name is Kirsten Dunst, I believe. Yeah. No, no, is, is that, is it? no, no, it's not Kirsten Dunst. Why did I say that? God, I'm an that? idiot. What's her real name? Hillary Duff. Why did I say That's Kirsten? Yeah, yeah, Kirsten yeah. Dunst is from Spider-Man, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm yeah. tripping. Yeah, oh, my God. I'm being silly. Anyways... Yeah, so uh, what's her name? Hillary Duff was uh, the little girl. It was like a Casper and Friend or something like that. I don't even know exactly what it was called. Uh, uh, meets Wendy. Casper meets Wendy. That's exactly never, what it was. I've never seen that one. Yeah. What was the one that made uh, you get into Frank Sinatra? Uh, what Women Want. With yeah, Mel what Gibson. movie? Yeah, What Women Want with, with Mel Gibson. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that whole soundtrack is just amazing. The whole, the, it, I think there's probably... Ten songs in that soundtrack, and I'd say eight of them are Sinatra. Dude, Great. for sure, Great. absolutely killer, man. There's a, there was a couple of different ones that he was played in. I don't know, like you know, I, I feel like a couple of different movies did reference me to start, you know, enjoying his music. Uh, he was in uh, Mrs. Doubtfire was one of them for sure. Oh. He was played in that, and I loved Robin Williams. You know, I, I still do, obviously. Um, and it was just really, really, I don't know, man, really held a, you know, big part of my childhood, I guess, nope. you know, mm -hmm. so shout out to Frank Sinatra, man. Uh, could, you also, could you imagine being that guy that was like, no, nah, dude, you, we can't take you. I don't, you're, you're Frank Sinatra, <laughs> but no, you can't. <laughs> I can't imagine and be like, all right, he left. It's Ridiculous. your fault. You yeah, know? for real. He, like you lost. It's, it's bad enough to lose my business, name. but like you lost the business of Frank Sinatra. For like, real, you messed yeah, up. Absolutely, dude. That's crazy. That's crazy. I was thinking about that with like musicians that like try Someone's to get a, their try to get a label. But on that one, yeah, yeah for, for real. real. Like somebody get on a label, and then like somebody's like, no, we, we don't want your demo, and then yeah. they go somewhere else and they get famous. Like think about that dude that like denies somebody and then they come out. That's awesome. crazy. They probably, I mean, you know, they're just hating themselves at that point. Oh, yeah. Self-loathing all day. Oh, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hating it, bro. Uh, September 11th, 1982, Frank Zappa's Valley Girl reaches its chart peak of number 32 on the Hot 100. It's the only top 40 hit for the uh, eccentric singer who releases over 60 albums in his lifetime. His daughter, Moon Unit Zappa, plays the Valley Girl in the song. Frank Zappa's super funky, bro. Super funky. Yeah. Love it, man. Uh, but, yeah, that's really crazy about, you know, uh, Frank Sinatra, though, and how, like, it all linked, like, and what, you know, we hold dear to our memories. They also say that smell is, like, the most distinctive memories you'll ever have. So, like, you will correlate a smell to a memory more than you would, like, you know, how you felt. Or something, right. or a different sense, you know, mm -hmm. what you heard, you know, like you'll feel different about the smell. And for example, um, anybody who's in my family who's, you know, who knows, you know, knew my grandma or whatever, she, every time I smell Dove soap, like just the straight up the bar, just the straight up bar that you just wash your hands yeah. with. Oh, I didn't mean to hit the mic. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, but you know, when you, you're washing your hands, man. And every time I smell that type of Dove, I think of her house because she was super, like, Nazi about washing your hands, yeah. like before and after eating. <laughs> you come in the house, you gotta wash your hands. You know, like you go outside, you gotta wash your hands. <laughs> like it was crazy, dude. She was so like Nazi about it. You know, like I'm not like talking crap, but like right, right. it's just the truth. You know, like she was crazy about it. It was funny. You know what I mean? Like everybody knew. You just like got in a routine of it when you came to her house. You know. Uh, so yeah, Dove soap, just the plain bar, makes me think of uh, her house and her. Huh. It's crazy, dude. I can't really think crazy. of a lot of smells, but for me, it's always been taste, though. Yeah, man. taste. Like, right certain on. things I taste, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's you know, grandma back in the day. Yeah. You know, peanut butter fudge. <laughs> uh. Peanut butter fudge <laughs> is awesome, bro. For real. So uh, I'm going to start today with Raiders Review and Recommendations, my friends. Uh, this is episode 38, and I want you all, everybody who's tuned in right now, please go to www togetherftr.com, buy some merch, uh, you know, 
Check out some other episodes. Share this one. Go subscribe on YouTube. You know, the whole shebang, baby. We're just trying to keep it live over here and spread some awareness on topics we feel like you all should know about. Uh, we got a lot of things, you know, in the fire right now, in the cabinet, brewing. So just stay tuned, stay watching, stay updated. Uh, I just actually created a group on Facebook that you can now join that will keep up with all updates, you know, and, you know, you can drop memes in there and, you know, whatever you guys want to do, different ideas, debate topics. Um, so, yeah, definitely go check out that group. It's just uh, Together FTR podcast group. Uh, you know, it's open to the public, so definitely go join that, guys. Yeah, that's killer. I mean, jump in there and say something you want to be discussed. That's pretty, you know, yeah. things kind of – yeah, everybody's opinions are. What is it? <clears throat> Excuse me. You're good. Said everybody's opinions are valued. Oh know? yeah, dude. Yeah. We want to hear some random stuff that we can talk about on here, and you guys can talk about with us. You know, like we definitely want to hear all input. You know, that's why I was asking if you guys thought it was cool for the recommendations. You know, and to see if people are you know really liking that. But that's why also I'm just, I'm going to start bringing the quotes back and see if people like that. You know, if they don't and they tell me I don't, then I'll, I'll take it off. You know, yeah. like. But I want to see what other people think, and I want you guys to tell me. So just let me know what's up, for real. They have a voice. They just need to use it. Absolutely, my friend. And uh, so the first thing is the recommendation. So I said this on last episode. I'm going to say it again, guys. It's going to take me a couple, you know, 30 seconds to get through this. I'm going to fly through it, let you guys know, uh, so we can get into this episode. Um, And, you know, let you guys know of some local things that are going on very, very soon that you need to be a part of. Uh, you know, this coming Saturday, September uh, 14th at 9 a.m., the Elks Lodge 350 will be hosting a charity golf scramble for kids with cancer at the Diamond Links Golf Course in Catlicksburg, Kentucky. Uh, and on that same day, on the same day, that Saturday, at 6 p.m. down at the Ashland Riverfront, they're going to be having great food, cold beer, along with a car and bike show, gate at 5, $20 to attend, party starts at 6 so if you guys are out next Saturday, you know, uh, and if you have time in the morning to go to the golf scramble, just, you know, definitely check these things out, guys. These are things that are going on in your community, and you should care about them. Uh, then we got Wednesday, September 18th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The 10th Annual Homeless Veterans Stand Down will be taking place at 624 Ninth Street, Huntington, West Virginia. Please arrive by 10 a.m. for the open c- opening ceremony and stay for a day of food and fun. So got some cool stuff up. Just wanted to recommend those also. I want to throw another one up. Yeah, here. absolutely. Not a certain date or anything, but I've talked yeah. about this with, with a lot of friends. But uh, I went to a really cool place called Silver Run Ranch. Oh, yeah, dude. That's, uh, it's an alpaca ranch where yeah. they have like 15 alpacas. Uh, they shear them and everything. You can go out there and like take the kids out. We took our kids out. That's and awesome. like they got to feed the alpacas and That's help really like sweet, wash dude. them and stuff. And, That's really sweet. And they got some amazing – like they, they shear them and they take all the uh, – all the wool from them makes mm-hmm. some amazing products, That's scarves awesome. and stuff. So I'm just trying and to help them. Where is this at? It's in Callisburg. It's oh, okay, out so it's off. Not uh, far no, I'll, you know, Route right Three. I don't oh, Route Three. Yeah, dude. So I mean, it's really not bad. It's about What's a 15 it called minute again? drop. Silver Run Ranch. Silver Run Ranch. Everybody who's tuned in right now, definitely go check that place out because it looks like a whole lot of fun. Yeah, it really was a lot of fun, and, and yeah, it's local, that, they, they sell some amazing stuff. I mean, alpacas are from the Andes Mountains in South yeah, America. Dude, the fact that we have. A farm here. It's a blessing. Yeah, it's killer. It's really and, awesome. And no one knows about it. So I'm trying to give the guy. Oh, we, name. yeah. Guy's oh, name yeah. is Kevin Tony, and he runs it, and he's just a really good dude. That, that is, is awesome. Great to the animals and yeah. just good to people. I saw so. you posted it in Build Ashland, man. Yeah, yeah we yeah. definitely need to be posting that all over the place and oh, letting yeah. people know about this really, really cool uh, ranch, you know? And, and he, all awesome. you got to do is call him up. You can hit him up on Facebook or wherever. It's a Silver Run Ranch so on you Facebook. Do, you just like plan just it say, like, hey, hit yeah, him yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to bring the kids by and see what you got. And you go out and spend some time with the animals and then you nice. go in they got like a, a whole showroom mm-hmm. where he has all his products and everything all the you can buy yarn if you're into that kind of stuff and Sweet, the, doing your own and he sells like Scarves and blankets. There is cool stuff Heck out of, yeah, out of dude. alpaca wool. That's know? really sweet, it's really man. It's really neat. It's really cool. That is awesome, dude. So, yeah, those are the recommendations of the day for local things. I'm just going to run through a couple of shows I'm recommending right now to everybody. Uh, Yellowstone, starring Kevin Costner. Uh, Peaky Blinders, starring Cillian Murphy, a Netflix original. Uh, the 100. Shout oh. out to my boy recommending it yes, to me. The best. For real, dude. That show is a banger, dude. I love it, bro. John Murphy. John, dude, he's, he became one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Him and Raven are probably my top two. Yeah. Like you Straight hate him throughout up. most of the show. Oh, yeah. And you're like, but I love him. I love his guy. I love yeah. him, bro. But, yeah, and those are the shows I'm going to recommend today, guys. And we're going to get straight into the Raiders review. 
And today we had to go with our hearts and we had to rate the top took three. A lot of thought too. Mel, it really did take us a minute to get these. Uh, the top three Mel Gibson movies. Um, so we chose one apiece. So we came up with the top three of all time, okay? And I'm going to let my man Kool-Aid name what he chose and why he chose that. Because Actually, you don't even need to be told just because you got to think. Once it's you hear Mel these, Gibson. bro, once you hear yeah. these, you know. Exactly. You know about Mel oh, Gibson. Rip, you already know. You know about this stuff. Well, I had to go with the Patriot. God, it was such. It was such. Oh, man. I'm just a the history part, buff. Yes. Dude, the Patriot you know. was so sick. He Fledger, bro. The part when he like whenever uh you know <clears throat> the that when the, you know he's about to first attack those cats that are coming around, and you know Mel Gibson like he's got the, his boys up on the little hill mm-hmm. and stuff, and then you know you got Heath Ledger that you know whatever dude like that's probably one of my favorite parts of the whole thing. That's my with the favorite tomahawk. part of the whole movie. Where he's bro. running back and forth, yes. making it look like it's a whole yes. army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So good. Crazy so good. man. Crazy. And uh, what one did you choose, Lambo? I had to go with Braveheart. You know, it's, oh, God, it's <laughs> so good. I mean, it's, Love it. it is history, oh, but you're playing yes. it up to a point, that, you know, almost to a tall so tale. But, good, but, man, William Wallace, I mean, come on. Such dude good. just gets tore up over losing this girl. And, yeah. And the crazy Irishman. Oh, yeah, man, dude, that's like, for real. It's like my soul I'm animal right there. I know man. a lot about crazy Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, man, and the third one was my choice, and I chose Mad Max just because, dude, that was seriously one of the first, like, best apocalypse, post-apocalyptic movies that came out. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, it held a candle for itself for so long. Then you had Waterworld with Kevin Costner, which was legit. It was really good, and, you know, it it doesn't get a lot of, it doesn't get a lot of, It doesn't get what it's worth. Yeah, good Dude, criticism. Dude, that but I movie loved it. was sick, bro. Yeah. For real, it was yeah. post-apocalyptic. I mean, there wouldn't up. be any of that without Mad Max, though. Yeah, for you know? exactly. Yeah, I I'm watched Mad Max, Mad Max just a couple yeah. weeks ago again. It's like Dude, it, it just gets better, the path, man. It, it, it really it, did before it's time. Like you watch it, and you're yeah. still like, dang, this is. Good. Oh, yeah, dude, 100%. So good. You're not lying, man. Uh, and also, guys, today we rated our top three Nickelodeon shows. And I'll go ahead and, uh, you know, do mine first. My top three Nickelodeon shows are Chalk Zone. And for those of you who have watched Chalk Zone, you already know what time it is, and you know who's got the chalk. Rudy's got the chalk. <laughs> Rudy's got the chalk. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm too old for this one. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who's got the chalk. Oh, man. <laughs> ah! Oh, he don't know who's got the chalk, ladies and gentlemen. Well, now not, you know. No. Rudy has the chalk. Okay. If you don't I'm, know, now you know. <laughs> I don't know. So he knows who's got the chalk now. <laughs> so now that that's established, we, we've had a good episode, guys. We'll t- we'll see you later. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> episode 38. Because Rudy for the has record, the chalk. www.togetherftr.com. Uh, my second choice was Hey Arnold, simply because, I mean, it Move really is. Head. <laughs> <laughs> it really is a classic, man. Like, Hey Arnold, it will always hold a dear part of my heart. You remember when Oscar, you know, uh, the <laughs> Oscar Kakasha, I think that was his name. <laughs> he's like got the come over, and he has a little kitty, and he's like the kitty. The, like the way he says it, bro. It it's literally the funniest. I don't know what type of accent it is, but it's seriously the funniest episode you will see, man. And like, I love Hey Arnold, dude. I've literally sat and laughed at Hey Arnold by myself as a grown man more than I should have. <laughs> An embarrassing amount of time I've sat and watched Hey Arnold and hung yeah. out by myself. Uh, and to wrap it up, ladies and gentlemen, my third choice as my favorite Nickelodeon show was Keenan and Kel. Because, dude, hey. who doesn't like Keenan and Kel? Now, let's go ahead but and be clear. who loves orange soda? You already know who <laughs> loves orange soda. And here's my thing, my friend. So with that being said, let's go ahead and be clear on this show for the record. Uh, Drake and Josh is a strong second to Keenan and Kel when it comes to a duo show. Name a better one right now. I can't think of it. I can't. Mork and Mindy. (laughs) (laughs) I had to go way back for that one. The Adventures of Pete and Pete was pretty good. It was was pretty good, but it was not as good as Keenan and Kel, and it was not as good uh, as Drake and Josh. So for all you haters out there, just if you have something that's a better duo show, go ahead and drop it right now so we can, you know, debate that. Because I need to know what's going on, guys, for real. That's just a comedy. 
A com- yeah, you a don't comedy. Want to go like, somebody yeah. can say Batman and Robin. You yeah, know what I'm yeah good call, good call, good call. A, a, comedy. a comedy duo. My yeah. bad. Sorry. Good call, good call. Yeah, to be clear. In that comedy same duo, genre, yeah. yeah. It's, it, you're not touching it, bro. The only one I could think of, oh, man, I don't even know, dude. I can't think of any. I think that's it. The Adventures of Pete and Pete, Keenan and Kel, and Drake and Josh are the best, in my opinion. Yeah. So, Lambo, uh, let's go ahead and hear your top three Nickelodeon shows, my friend. All right. As the old guy, of course, I went way back. and <laughs> I kind of feel like a pioneer in the whole, like, <laughs> almost crossing the line of cartoons. You know, <laughs> you wouldn't have some of the shows that has that crass humor if it wasn't for Ren and Stimpy. Dude, 100%. Oh, man. I mean, since then, shows, the cartoons have just, changed. like, changed a lot. Dramatic you know, and changed, the, yeah. the, the tongue-in-cheek kind of humor that's yeah. like, is this a show for kids or is it for adults kind <sighs> Dude, of thing. Like you don't that, know. Ren and Stimpy was just the first, the first one. one. You it know? really was, bro. Like, Stimpy's Nose Goblins. Bro. Like, that's the best. He had a great collection. Yeah. There was some that show. There was times where I was watching, and I was like, "Why am I watching this? Yeah. Some of this is so dumb." But for real, can't help but love it. Nonsensical, love it. but it was yes. great. So but good. like, like back in the day, they made cartoons for kids, but it was also the parents could sit down. And watch oh yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. for sure. Ren and Stimpy was one of those where you start watching the kids, and then halfway through, you're like, "Wait a minute, maybe we shouldn't be. Maybe watching I should this. watch this later." <laughs> for real, yeah, dude. Kids go to bed. Another cartoons. one that was like, I, th- I feel like another one that had the perfect balance of that, that was like not too over the top adult, not too over the top kiddish, and was the best one that ever came out, in my opinion, Shrek. Yeah. Bro, Shrek 1. For, for being a good movie, like there's so much like, tongue in cheek humor in that. Bro, it's definitely for adults. So funny, bro. Yeah. So funny, dude. And I feel like it literally was for adults, man. They were cussing on that. Yeah. Like, you know, like they were cussing and everything. The second one, they didn't really cuss or anything. Yeah. Like, they were legit, bro. You Shrek said 1. I got to save my ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He and was, donkey, bro. Donkey was just, yeah. Donkey Straight was up. definitely put in there for adults. Oh, yeah, dude. 100% it's Eddie yeah. Murphy, Eddie bro. Murphy. So Come on, dude. If I was not colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. What was the second one you chose, my dude? Uh, I chose Wild Thornberry. Yeah. So I don't know, good. man. It's just Eliza and Darwin. God. And what was, uh, what was his name? name? Donnie the Monkey Boy? Yes, Donnie, bro. Donnie was What was her sister's great. name? Uh, oh the older God. sister. Yeah, I don't even remember. Deb? <laughs> Debbie, it was yeah, Debbie. It, was, it Debbie. was Debbie. Good yeah. call, bro. I was trying to, I was trying to like channel that real quick. You yeah. know, I was trying to like, you know, get that focus, bro. And I have to say too, like the movie was even so good, dude. Which one? We talking about the the first movie, Wild Thornberrys, the or the Rugrats uh, crossover with Wild nah, Thornberrys? the first because one because sick. like there was a You're song in the, the first leopard. one. Yeah, there was a captured. song in the first mm-hmm. one that was, uh, God, was that uh, like Paul Simon or something? Where it's like uh, the name of the song was Father and Daughter. Mm-hmm. And it's about it, the one of the lines in it is can a, can another something like uh, no other father ever love his daughter as much as I love you like that's my song nice, to my bro. oldest daughter that's like, legit that's the song I remember watching that when my personable. little girl was 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 little and that was like our movie you that's know awesome dude killer I love have a whole it. series in there actually I have, uh, I have to sit down and watch it sometime dude man. legit come over. Dude, That's we can bust it out Two grown men quick. just getting together, hanging out, watching Wild Thornberries. I'm in, bro. I've got All Real Monsters and Avatar The Last Airbender. So, dude, this is a real series that can go down. There I got the go. whole series of them, bro. Like, the box sets they had at Walmart. I went through this phase where I was, like, being real, like, nostalgic and just weird with my money. And, uh, yeah, I was just, like, <laughs> buying random, uh, you know, Nickelodeon cartoons as yeah. a grown man. So, judge me if you will. My last one, I went way back. Like, and I never even saw it. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people have it because yeah. it's way oh. back early Nick. We're talking yeah. like early '90s. Nick, 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 it's called Nick, 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 yeah, for real. Nick back in those days. And then Yo. Nick at Night, yeah. bro. Nick at Night was so dope. They played the Teen best Nick. shows. Dude, Teen Nick was dope too. Full House, you'd get Family yeah. Matters, Fresh mm-hmm. Prince of Bel Air, The Cosby Show, Roseanne. Yeah, uh, stuff. They had the lame ones too, but like they had George Lopez, bro. Oh, yeah. that, oh, yeah. Dude, it was so good. I'm trying to interrupt you. Sorry, it's bro. Right. I this, just want to make sure I didn't forget. You this know show was mean? live action, not a cartoon, but yeah. uh, you can't do that on television, yeah. which was like a, you know, it bas- basically it's a predecessor to like all that. You know, it was basically all skit comedy. And like dude, if, if someone so said like the word SNL type deal, yeah, yeah kind of. But up. Yeah, for kids, like if if someone said water, then suddenly water would pour down from the ceiling on top of their head. And you said that's where the slime started. Yeah, too, slime, for slime got real big. I mean, you had Double Dare that did slime, but this is like random slime. Like yeah, if yeah. If you said I don't know to anything, then slime would drop down on them. And and you know, big stars in there too. Like it was almost yeah. like the, almost like the uh, kind of 
edgy version of, of like Mickey Mouse Club for stars. Like nice. Alanis Morissette got, got her That's start sick, there. It was, it was Canadian, so there's the one backdrop of it, you yeah. know, that thing. that It's Canadian, not American, you know, yeah. but... Canadian they, shows they are a lot different, stuff. bro, and it's kind of like the BBC, you know? Like, if you watch BBC Network and you watch, like, some of their shows, it's kind of hard to get into, yeah. like, besides some of them. And he, this goes back to recommendations. For anybody who hasn't watched The Last Kingdom, dude, it was originally a yes. BBC Network uh, show, but then became, I'm pretty sure it's a Netflix original now because, dude, it's like, that show is next level. Yeah. Bro, it's seriously top ten TV series of all time, The Last Kingdom. Shout out my dude. Kazi for recommending that. Yeah, and I had to say, just disclaimer, I love you, Canada. I wasn't dogging on you. Just, you know. <laughs> I hate your Blame Canada. Teams. Yeah. <laughs> Blame Canada. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. All right, uh, what's yours? Yeah, Kool-Aid. Let's hear what yours oh, were, bro, because they were <clears throat> dope. <laughs> Somebody's. Well, I had to go with cat dog. Yes. Cat dog. Cat, cat dog. dog. What was Long the gang? <laughs> what was uh? What was the name of the gang that they were not cool with? It was like the little tiny poodle. The greasers, weren't the, it? Uh, it might just been the greasers, maybe. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. It might just been the greasers, but it was like the the buff bulldog looking dude. Mm-hmm. And then the rat the, Winslow though. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. My he was he I was love he was Winslow. sick. Yeah, man. Hey, uh, dog! <laughs> you're making me feel so old right now. Like, I Dude. barely remember Cat Dog. Really? Yeah, oh, I'm, man. Yeah, I think I had kids that time. That's well, true, bro. I know you'll remember my it. next one, for sure. Yeah, this yeah. is definitely from my time. Rocco's Modern yes. Life. Dude, Rocco's Modern Life was really dope. But, like, honestly, if That movie that came back? Yeah, I watched it the other night. It was pretty funny. I don't know. It was all right. I mean, it was decent. It was all right. I remember the old episodes, like... I don't know. Look. I'll go ahead. Sorry. I mean... I know, it was definitely controversial. Oh, yeah, for sure, bro. My thing is, dude, like, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to be, like, kind of, not like, I don't know, unpopular opinion. I wouldn't even put Rockers Modern Life in my top ten, dude. Like, with, because think about it, how many, think about how many shows we talked about that were so good, bro. I never even watched Marcos Modern Life because it was in your generation, you know what I mean? But, like, but Heifer, the generation. Heifer was hilarious, bro. Yeah, Heifer, 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 Heifer is is Patrick Starfish. Yeah, <laughs> he really, like he Patrick really Starfish is wants to grow up to be he Heifer. Really is, the original, bro. the That's OG. Yeah. And what was his turtle friend? What was his name? Oh, oh Sheldon shoot. wasn't it? Sheldon, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> like Rocco's Modern Life was good. Don't get me wrong, but like you got to think about how many of those we just looked at that were so great. Many we, could name. Hey, we, we didn't mention. Hard. We didn't I wouldn't put it in my top ten. Though, I don't think because I it was above my generation and I never really watched it that often. I feel yeah. like I feel like I was born like a little bit in a different generation when all these other cartoons already came out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I never really went back and like gave it a chance. I guess you know. But well, it was dope nonetheless. I mean, though that goes along with this next one though. Yeah, and it's another one that, like, I liked it, but I wouldn't even put it in my top ten because I think it skipped my generation. You know what I mean? That's that's a big thing we're seeing with this is we all have different. Yeah, yeah. like, you know, like, you're a generation above me and you're a generation above him. Like, you know what I mean? And there's some of them that go over. Like, I mean, for instance, you could say Rugrats because, like, I mean, even in in my generation, the next one, like, it it wasn't everybody's It was underrated. Right. It wasn't, it was just. It was real cynical, I feel like. You know, I feel like it was kind of just like pessimistic, you know, like yeah. it was kind of negative, you know, <laughs> like, but it was funny in its own route. Mm-hmm. And that's Angry Beavers. That was my dude's third choice because that's yes, a sir. banger, son. Yes, sir. What was their names? Uh, hold on. Uh, you asked me too quick. The, the blonde one. He had the middle part. Uh, Looked and then, like Owen Wilson. <laughs> 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 Looked like Gimli. No, I'm just playing. Uh, but no, seriously, what was their names? I got to look it up. <laughs> you're going to have to because you asked it was me like, It was like, uh, while Rennie, you're looking, I have to Rennie say, or I feel like Rugrats could be there for all of us. Oh, just 100%. It's the one, it was there. Isn't it amazing you can have a cartoon about babies that grow Daggert and Norbert. Like, yeah, yeah. Daggert and Norbert. Dag- Daggett. I think it's Daggett. It is Daggett. Yep, you're yeah. right. Daggett and Norbert. Nor- Norbert. I can't even talk, bro. Daggett and Norbert. Yeah. yeah. Game I love cartoons, man. Dude, you know what? Another one was really great. Uh, Dexter's Laboratory. That was Cartoon Network. <sighs> that was Cartoon Network. But though. still, like, it wasn't Nickelodeon. But I'm just throwing yeah. it out there because it made me think of I Am Weasel and uh, I R Baboon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wh- where was that at? Was that on Cat Dog? No, that was, was on that? Dexter's Laboratory. I think. No. Mm-hmm. No. Was yeah, it? I'm pretty sure. Huh. It was one of the little like spinoff cartoons okay. of Dexter's okay. Lab. It was either that or Powerpuff Girls. Oh, man. I'll look it up. I'll, it was in one of my. I think it was Dexter's Lab, or maybe it was Cow and Chicken. Yeah, I think, I think it was Cow and Chicken. Actually, that was, that was 
Cartoon Network too. Yeah. Oh no, I'm talking about I R Baboon, I am Weasel, or whatever. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm pretty I think, sure it is. I think it is uh, Cow and Chicken. Cow and Chicken. Yeah. It the, is. Yep. That's yep. the one that also had. Um, Oh, the guy with the big red. You can butt. tell by the animation. What was the character? It was, it was on that too, on Cow and Chicken. The guy, the guy was all red, like the a devil. devil. The and devil a with a big old booty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the big booty. Yeah. Uh, I am Weasel. Ed Bighead, son. Speaking of freaking Rocco's Modern Life, <laughs> <laughs> Ickis. He was awesome. I liked yeah. him a lot. Dude, you guys remember Fuzzy Lumpkins? Bro, girls. yes, dude. Powerpuff Girls is seriously one of my favorite. He had that favorite. shotgun, didn't he? Was he the yeah, one with the shotgun? Yeah, bro. He had a shotgun of some sort. I feel like Get it was just like a stick. Lawn. Yeah, it was just like a stick yeah, or a something. Yeah, stick. Yeah. Yeah, straight up a boomstick. Did you guys watch, uh, see, Major Glory, those superheroes were the Dexter's Laboratory one. Yeah. It was like the Purple yeah. Hulk and like uh, Major Glory and the guy who played guitar. Yeah. Those, that was on like, Dexter's Laboratory. It was Laboratory. like Thor, but he played yeah, like yeah. air guitar or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mojo Jojo, he was dope. Cartoons, man, we could do this all night, dude. Cartoons. I love it, bro. Or like, there, there's it. another one right there. Isn't, yeah. God, look at this. We're jumping into Cartoon Network now. We just, we just, we just, we, we just railroaded, man. We just went off the, the tracks. Ship sailed, but, man. The ship has sailed. Courage the Cali dog. So good, bro. I was about to ask you guys how much you loved it because I wasn't even asking if you liked it because I know you do. How about <laughs> how about the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy? Dude, that was a banger too. That was for yeah. real. Bring out your inner emo. You feel yes. me? Get goth with it. You feel me? Hey, I'm in yeah. all black right now. <laughs> that is funny, bro. Yeah, just want to take a minute, uh, you know, because we've been getting crazy. Uh, back to something. www.togetherftr.com. Go check out the Dot merch. Com. Got a lot of cool stuff coming out, guys. Make sure to go subscribe on YouTube. Go give these guys an ad and check out all the great stuff they're doing right now, sharing all the memes, making all the laughs, you know. Um, so yeah, I just want to take Not a minute. Not gonna lie, to get... my stuff gets a little wild. <laughs> eighteen plus explicit content. And speaking of eighteen plus explicit content, how good was Squid Billies, bro? You guys watch Squid Billies? Oh my god! <laughs> Don't touch the tram. <laughs> <laughs> we talking about where we live? We are living Squid Billies. Believe that. About... That's for this... real, bro. Oh, man. Unknown Henson is legit. Love him, bro. So funny. That's another Raiders review for you right there. Yeah. Best adult swim card. For real, dude. That's another for one real. we got to do next time, man. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get right into it, guys. we got a couple topics we want to go over with everybody today and kind of discuss. So, you know, uh, I'm going to get my serious face on. You know, I'm just like, hey, boom, and then it's real, and now we're here and it's real life. You know, I'm just messing with y'all, dude. Bring I'm acting back down silly. Ground level Episode 38. Getting wild. Time to get serious. Time to get serious. No, for real though. Uh, so, we're all gonna agree on this. So there's not. It's not even really a question. Um, we're kind of just gonna talk about it and see what our point of views are. You know, there's no debate here. Really, we'll it's see if we just, agree. I don't know if we all agree. Well, here's the thing. We might not all agree, but like I feel like we're going to be on a common ground right, of right. Like, like-mindedness, if that makes yeah. sense. You know what I mean? So, and we're going to ask all the people out here. I want you guys to comment, and I want you guys to involve yourself with it. Should teachers be allowed to conceal carry? So, I'm going to start with Kool-Aid and let me, we're going to let you have the floor. You got the talking stick. You make the moves, baby. <clears throat> <laughs> let, me, let me go ahead and get a sip of this. Get a little wet your whistle. Wet, wet your little <laughs> whistle, Sonny. So, should Stupid. teachers be allowed to conceal carry? Yes. At school. They absolutely should be able to, and I feel like they should have armed security there as well. Yeah, that would with definitely all, be With legit. all this crazy school shooting going on and everything, Yeah. like when I was back in school, mm-hmm. we didn't have all this social media that's yeah. where a lot of bullying happens. Yeah. It don't oh, happen yeah. in. I mean, it happens in school. Yeah, but I guarantee you, get on that social media, nope. you're gonna see a lot more bullying. Well, bro, and then that's what you know. Well, I can't do nothing over the internet. You know, and then you just get to that point. You snap. You can't take it no more. Everyone's dogging you on the internet and everything. Well, I'm gonna go deal with it in person, and they usually go to daddy's gun shed. You know what I mean? And that's the problem with it. It's like when I was a kid, someone pick on you, you just go home yeah, and hang out with someone yeah. else. But now you can't get away from it. Dude, I was literally, we talked about yeah, this, bro. Yeah, conversation we I had. Was I, literally about, I was about to bring this up, dude. We literally talked about this last episode, yep. man. And you brought up the, the most valid point that we brought up just, you know, alike. 
and it's like you can't get away from it now. It's yep. straight up, bro. You can't go home and just like you said, kick it with different people. Yep. See different people. Oh, it's not a big deal. I'm living my life. This is the '90s. There's bro. no escaping yeah. anything anymore. Now, because dude, you're you right. You can't in get it. away from it. Yeah, you, you, you reach in your pocket, and there yeah. you got 15 notifications of somebody mm-hmm. talking trash or yep. you know commenting on your stuff, and just like blowing up your phone on how much yep. they don't like you or whatever. That's, and that's real, hard. Man. It's hard. For, I mean, being a kid right now. It's got to be tough, man. It really does have to be tough, bro. Like, I got out of it, like, recently, obviously, you know what I mean? Because I am still young, and, like, that's why I try to be not tough on my kids, but I try to be very realistic with my children because I want them to know that, like, you can't let people speak to you in any type of manner in front of anybody. And I know this sounds horrible, but, like, I, you know, my daughter, I told her, like, if somebody picks on you, like, you tell the teacher, you know, I want you to tell the teacher, and I want you to try to solve it that way. And if the teacher does what she does, leave it alone. Yep. Keep telling the teacher. We're good. But if the teacher doesn't listen, and, I'm, you know, bro, sometimes, you know, it, they might think that maybe a kid is not doing what they think or right, something. You right. know how it is, bro. That's just how life goes, dude. When you're in school, that's just what it is. If they don't take so, care of it, then you just I to, I to, I told I told her, them out. And I hate to say that. <laughs> I told her hit him hit, hit the person in the nose. Yeah. Straight same up. thing I told my kids. My kids are a little like, bit older. Yeah. You know, but, I mean. You can't let people do that to you because no. then they'll think but they can I mean, do that to you all the time. My stand on that is violence just brings more violence. It does. Yes, you're it right, does. but you also have to stand I up mean, for I yourself. I mean, you, I know you can't be no punk, obviously. Right, right. That's, what, and, that's pretty much you what I'm know, That at. would absolutely have to be the last resort. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's, what I, that's, that's the way I raise my kids. I mean, that's, my my that's, oldest son, you know, he was a big boy when he was in school. In the mirror mm-hmm. one time, I got a phone call from the principal because, like, some kid on some kid kept calling him fat, you know, a... Yeah. And over and over and over, and he yeah. just took it and took it and took it, walking up the stairs, and the kid kept saying it. He just turned around and decked him. Boom. And I got the phone call. He was getting suspended and sent home, and, and they were like, you know, handle it when you get home. Listen, I did handle it when, I got, when he course. got home. Of course. I took him out for ice cream because he stood up for himself. Dude, look. And the kid wasn't going to mess with him no more. Here's my know? thing. That's we, an unpopular opinion maybe for we, a teacher to have, nah, but look, you got to handle your business sometimes. We have to be clear on this because here's the thing. People who don't have self-confidence and who don't take up for themselves end up being the people who do these mass shootings exactly. because they're not being told to, to defend themselves. And here's the thing. If – Somebody is just doing you like that, and you can handle it another way. Absolutely, yeah. I encourage that. Yeah. But here's the thing. Let's all be clear here. Getting punched in your face is good for you. I feel like everybody needs to be humbled a little oh, bit yeah, every once in life. You. I feel like yeah. you need to be punched <laughs> in your mouth a little bit to realize that you – one, it's a little bit of both. You, you realize you're not made of glass. Stool you think you're standing well, on. Well, it gives, yeah, it gives you two. It gives you one that lets you know you're not made of glass, and you're not you know going to fall apart if somebody punches you. And it also gives you that – I can get punched. Like people yeah. can put their hands on me. There's consequences to my to mouth. how I act, and it, it humbles people yeah. in a way that I think everybody needs to be. Everybody needs to lose a fight at least once. You yeah. need to lose once. You need to lose once and take one. You need and to be humbled sometimes. Yes, in life. it's good for you, and that's what I'm saying. And you as know? a kid, that's especially, the thing, you know? that's the thing now. You know, you do end up whooping somebody. You're <laughs> they're going to throw you away quicker than yeah. some, like. Yeah. You know mm, I, mean, I mean, it depends. It depends. I mean, I, I feel like as, as a kid, you're you right, kind of need that humbling once in a while because if you do that same kind of thing when you're an adult, you will go to different. jail and stuff. Yeah. You will go to prison yeah. if you, you know, if, it depends on how bad yeah. you beat them. You know, and I'm not like sitting here saying that, like people should beat no, on each violence other. Violence is never the I answer. Am, violence is always a last resort. Yes, I'm one of the but, most peaceful people you ever meet, but I'm not going to tell my child to be nothing but peaceful right, all the time because right. that's how you get bullied. Literally, that's yep. how you mm-hmm. get people take your kindness for weakness and they yep. treat you a certain type of way. We know. In real life, reality, not the people who are on the other side of it, but the people who are in it, the people who are involved in school settings and jail settings, and the I mean, they go hand in hand. I hate to put it that way, but, like, you get what I'm saying. It's that environment of, like, show no weakness. Right. So, mm-hmm. like, in a, in a realist mind state, I'm going to look at that and be like, okay, well, I'm going to tell my children, look – you need to be very respectful and treat every single adult with complete respect unless they give you reason not to. If they treat you like dirt, don't let don't, you know, let somebody treat you like dirt, but you need to respect all your elder your elders. I always preach that to my kids. But at the same time, if children are going to treat you like that, you tell the elders, if they don't fix it, you have to fix it yourself. Right. You can't let somebody talk to you or push you or slap you or throw drinks on you or whatever it may be. No. Nope. I do not agree with people like, "Oh, well, you know, you shouldn't tell your kid to hit somebody back. It's like you, sh- your kid shouldn't. 
get punched in their face and just like it, like let it happen. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, you can't let kids be like that because if you let kids get hit and get talked to and get treated a certain type of way, in my opinion, you are literally creating people that are going to do mass shootings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why it happens. That's one of the reasons. That's one of the main reasons. That's probably the biggest reason, honestly, dude. America's gone soft, though, man. Like I yeah. said, you you try to stand up for yourself. You get silenced with a pair of handcuffs. Yeah, oh. that's true. It is very true. <clears throat> but, yeah, so we got Kool-Aid stance on that. I'm sorry I kind of chimed in there just because I get real fired up about it, man. Like, I hate when but people, yes, they you should know, be like, able, I feel, teachers and, you know, they should be able to conceal carry. There should be. I feel like there should be a class, you know, like. I know we're a constitutional carry state, but I mm-hmm. feel like you should at least have the actual Teachers. concealed carry 100%. class. Yes. You should be to knowledgeable. Be able, yeah. To fire a weapon. Like, yeah. 100%. They should have to go through the class, and I think it should be a more extensive class, honestly. Because not all teachers are going to want to do it, but I think they all should be required to I in mean, a I way. I still think it should be a choice. I personally I don't. don't like, because I don't here's feel a, like you should – that's where the armed security comes in. Fair but, enough. Fair enough. But then we're looking at a real utopia now. We're looking at something that's going to be more funding we're going to have to get, more paychecks we're going to have to do. So that's all the taxes include, they take from all these hardworking yeah, Americans. It sounds good. That they should put it to it. We should, but we. Because how many billions of dollars you know go un, unspoken for? Oh, bro! Every you, year. You already know I feel the same exact way. But we know I mean, in that's reality, that's a whole different can of worms. Oh but, yeah, that's that's for another one. We can, we, we can talk about crazy stuff later. But being objective about this and speaking objectively about it, and I feel like, like I said, that's more of a utopia with the armed services. But realistically, every teacher could consider but you know, my that's thing, a more my realistic thing with that plan. Is how many, how many veterans do we have that need, need jobs? Work and, Dude, I, I'm you know, preaching who, with you. Who would really <laughs> put their life on the line to protect these oh, kids? Yeah. But then they got to get paid. They can't do it for free. And then that's I mean, more money. And you got people that are in Kentucky right now that have already messed up pensions and done this to people, and they're you know ripping teachers off when teachers should be valued just as oh, much yeah. as a doctor, such as first responders, yeah. EMT, fire uh, firefighters, uh, police. I think all of these things should be on the same type of salary cap. I think it should be on a doctor level because we need healers just like we need teachers. You want to have a dumb the, generation? They plant the seeds in the next generation. Exactly. You want to have a dumb generation? Oh, Come shucks. Sh- Y'all making me blush. <laughs> <laughs> Can you weed yet, mister? No. I'm going to do something we don't do a whole lot here. And this is this is weird coming from me, but yeah. I'm going to disagree. Okay, I fair enough. I do not feel... Fair enough. I do not feel that I agree with teachers dude, can still care. I'll tell you why. Dude, lay know, it out there, baby. You know I'm ready to I know debate. how much I have on my plate on a daily basis yeah. handling the classroom. Fair enough. Writing lessons, performing that lesson, okay. grading, all that. Mm-hmm. Now, the thing for me is teachers have a million things at all times distracting them. True. Now, you bring in that gun in the classroom, no matter how well it's concealed or how well it's carried, how well it's you know strapped down, That's a locked great up, point. whatever it is. That's a great point. You're bringing the problem in the classroom. And it's not like we have a problem right. of like, you're I mean, right. we, do, we have had the issue. Great but point. most school shooters come from someone who's, in that school, y'all, one hundred percent. It's not like we got terrorist attacks popping in a school and taking it over, like we're an HBO miniseries or something, you know. But to me, I know myself. You might I've get grown up around guns. I, I mean, I know guns. I've always shot guns. Yeah. But there's gonna be a moment. I mean, how many teachers have, you know, uh, the key to their test? stolen off their desk or stolen out of their desk or I know a teacher yeah all the time I know a teacher that that when I went to school a kid took her car keys out of her top drawer and stole her car for a joyride now here's my thing you got teachers like that who are this lady was like in her late 60s and not really able to you know manage the classroom you gonna put guns in her room you're no, going to put one on your right. pocket. That's a good valid point. That, that, hear me out. And then you've got me. I mean, I, I'll give you, give you me. I'm ADHD. I tell anybody that. Yeah. I, I'm going to get distracted. I'm going to forget to lock. Shoot, I, I forget to lock up my room if I ain't careful, you know? And, Fair enough. And I, you know, you for get me, busy, you get it, 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 it's a, you know, I get the reason for it. I totally agree with both of your all's opinions on it. 
But right. at the same time, you're looking at it from uh, you're, I see you're it from objective. I, I have it, I have it in a different perspective because I'm yeah. in that classroom. You know, I've been teaching well, for 12 years, and and I've seen teachers come and go that I'm like, I don't know that I trust them with a true. pen and paper. That's true, dude. Let alone you're right. a firearm. That's a you real know? good point to look at it at. I mean, but and then there's some kids that are sneaky. Not, yeah. not, 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 not bad. They just good at getting away with stuff and mm-hmm. being a little sneaky and and you know getting by with stuff and, and the yeah. last thing I want to know is that I was concealed carrying whether I kept it locked up or wherever mm-hmm. and I messed up and left my keys out or I somehow gave a kid access you're right dude they wouldn't have had you know it's you one thing right. I mean I think as a parent yeah having a you know as a parent having a gun not properly in your house you know mm-hmm. to where your kids can reach that's one thing yeah but I got four kids when I'm in that classroom I've got a hundred and sixty three a day yeah. It's interchange, yeah. yeah. You're absolutely right, dude, and that's a great point. It really is. I mean, I think about, like, I have I use, like, computers in my classroom, and I keep them locked up, and, yeah. and I'm always nervous that somebody's going to get a hold of one of those computers, and I'm not going to realize it, and that computer's going to be gone, and I'm out, you know, <laughs> money. I think about that. So imagine that in that same locked cabinet, not the same one, obviously. Yeah, yeah, keep, yeah. I'm not keeping the computers with guns. Yeah, But I'm just saying, same idea of a locked cabinet. <laughs> of course, it's you know, an example. Yeah, it, <laughs> reference it, it can, to. It can, if they want to be done too. bad enough, they'll yeah, get in there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. That's, and that's what I'm saying is there's definitely there's definitely issues with it. You know, I, I get in certain places, certain areas. I definitely think that you, you almost need it. Now, what if you carried it on your person? That's what I'm saying. You carry yeah, but person, you had yeah, to keep it on your person. I'm a big dude. I can handle most of the kids, but, man, I mean... High school level, there's some big, big fellas in there. Yeah, you know, and For real, uh, dude. you know, it, it is what it is. I, I, I would much Dude, rather some big girls some big might dudes. get you, yeah. boy. Yeah. I, That's for real. I, I'd much rather toss get, you around a little some. You I'd know, I'd much rather get punched in the mouth by a kid bigger than me <laughs> than have one, you know, knock me down and take Still a firearm off of me. You know, yeah. And I get I mean, what you're saying, bro. So, I mean, it's, it's just I have a different perspective because I'm, I mean, I'm there. You you're know, you're in it. Uh, definitely, and, and I, I get what you're it, saying. It, it just concerns me, but I mean, our armed guards. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, See, we what, have we have a, a, a on duty police officer who's stationed there all day long. Mm-hmm. And, who is it now? And, um, it's a new guy. I cannot remember his name. Okay. He just started beginning. Of, when I was last there, year. Officer Church used to. We've do had it. a couple of different ones since yeah. then. Uh, my my buddy uh, Officer Helms was there for a couple of years, and he really nice. increased security nice, a dude. lot there. Uh, one of the things he did was actually to bring in. Uh, a retired police officer Sweet. who is out in the middle of campus all day. He's he's not patrolling campus one period a day because he actually teaches a law enforcement class. Wow. Uh, and the really rest cool. of the time he's out patrolling and, and walking <clears throat> around, and, and he's armed. And, I mean, he's there mostly for protection of the kids. He's there, too, just to make sure no one's breaking the law on sure. campus. Sure, you know? yeah, of course. But it helps you guys out. Yeah, you know? it, like really, it, it takes it the weight I off got, Like I said, I got a million things I got to be in charge yeah, of all the bro. time. You know, I can't be it gets tough. running around to see who's doing what you know, it all does. the time. So. You're absolutely right, dude. And that's a wonderful perspective. And I never even thought about it like that. And I'm so glad that you brought that up for me to think about. Um, but my thing is, I right. was going to say about the on-person thing, uh, that's definitely a big thing. But, like, that kind of brings us to, like, the other thing we were talking about. Whereas, like, in this situation, what you're speaking on, we wouldn't want to do the concealed carry. We want to do the armed guards, you know, like people yeah. who are just specifically for that. They're not teaching. They're not worried right. about everything. You're absolutely right. So, yeah, the concealed carry probably wouldn't work unless you no, had people it, who were completely no room for excuses or mistakes. Right. I mean, you know what I mean? And, and that's I mean, tough to maybe do. Maybe certain teachers or something, but, I mean, there's— For the most part, there's some I mean, ditzy I've, people, man. I mean, I hate that this is going to make me sound like a horrible person, but <laughs> I've worked with some, some teachers that are, you know, five foot one and yeah. 110 pounds yeah. soaking wet, and it's like— you put a gun on that person, male or female. Yeah, it, it's gonna be easy. Yeah, to get it that. It might away, be a little know? bit easier unless I mean, I'm a that big person's dude, trained. But you I, know, I know there's some kids I've had that if if they wanted my lunch money, they they big <laughs> enough to take my lunch money. You know, <laughs> see me at the playground, Lambo. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a see you, yeah, bro. Yeah. 
12. <laughs> 12. <laughs> That's my grandmama's chain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, uh, we kind of differ on that a little bit. But and, at the and same that's okay. Time, it's the first time I've been, it was since I've been on. It's yeah. like, hey, we, oh, no, we it's disagree good. on something. I was oh, happy it's to good. hear that. I, yeah. lo- I love it, bro. And that's it's why good. I want to start doing the debate episodes, yeah. too, man, because it's going to be a lot of fun. we need to hear from them. Too. Yeah, we right. need to hear right. from people right. out here, too, man. We want to disagree, and we want to hear different perspectives, because that's really how you become an open-minded person. You and listen to everybody. Thing. We're being civil about it. That's of right. course, we're not we being need... nasty with each other. No, Wait. people need to have conversations with people, man. Wait a minute. You mean you can actually disagree on stuff and not make personal attacks? Right. Not around here. What? Not around here, son. You better, <laughs> you better be having you a chaw in, son. Drink up, a little bit of moonshine in Kentucky. I, I grew up watching Congress. I, I grew up watching Congress. I didn't know you could disagree on something without. Yeah. Hating somebody. All of Fox News just agrees all the time. We're just all on the same level, guys. Yeah. We're all on the same page. We all are idiots. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just talking heat. Don't listen to me. Yeah. But anyway, so let me tell you guys something that goes with that as well that actually happened to me today. So you guys know I get to go in with my crazy talk. I, I get to go in with my crazy talk, and that's just how it goes. I'm sorry, people. So I work at a restaurant, so I'm not even going to say it is what it is. Y'all who know me, y'all know where I work. But anyway, so I work at a restaurant in the public with people. I work in the front of the house. So with that being said, I get my crazy talk sometimes, and I don't know how loud I'm talking about it. So there was a guy who heard me, and I was talking pretty much about how the tyranny we're experiencing um, the corruption we're experiencing. I was talking about how Andrew Yang could be the real deal and Bernie Sanders could be the real deal for the Democrats and for our world, but I'm a skeptical, so maybe they are like the ones who are trying to get in there just to weasel around and get some crazy stuff going and take over our government as well because I'm skeptical about all things and I look at all things objectively and I look at, I'm trying to now as a 23-year-old 23 year old, you know, man growing up in a different time, you know. So with that being said, I was talking about that. I was talking about, you know, Yang and Sanders and I was talking about how uh, you know, in my opinion, um I feel like we should be more worried about, you know, real stuff instead of dumb stuff in my opinion such as climate change i was pretty much making fun of people who don't think it's real i was like oh yeah climate change is a hoax right yeah it's that's not real we don't have to worry about that i was just you know being my smart aleck self you know as i do because i i can't help myself really if you don't think climate change is real then (laughs) i don't know what you're doing over here to be honest um but anyway so and long story short i'm not going to go into all the details but so you know a chick who was serving uh, the guy who was sitting close to me or whatever who had heard me, he was like, as soon as I walked away, as soon as I walked away, he could have said anything to me while I was standing there. Mm-hmm. As soon as I walked away, he talked to her, and he was like, yeah, that guy's such an idiot. He was like, this country's never ran better. This country's never ran better than right now. It ain't never been ran better than it is right now. And I tell <laughs> you what, boy, we trumping out here, son. We getting straight to it. You sure got a perfect I don't mind. agree. <laughs> I got to say, I do not agree with a lot of the things Trump does. Like we talked about earlier, but bro. I, I feel like, like that man has done some good. Done a little yeah, bit. Man, think, He's done a little yeah. bit. He has, bro. Yeah, and I'm like, not talking crap on him. Peace with I'm North just Korea saying, like. Stuff like that, man. Yeah, but I, I mean, mean. It could be a front. He might just be a war criminal himself, and he's just, you know, you know, rubbing I mean, elbows with somebody. There's, there's a bunch of could be. You know, think about Doug Coe, bro. He was rubbing elbows with war mm. criminals, too, but they didn't really know if he was uh, really a war criminal, if he was just trying to convert him to Christianity. I mean, if you break down every single president, maybe you could leave off, like, the original, George Washington. <laughs> but every single one of them got good. And got bad. Yes, one hundred percent, bro. More I mean, so, more so for, than you know, others. Well, maybe not know. William Henry Harrison. He didn't live long enough to do it, you know. Yeah. But that's on him. But and then uh, they took out all the good ones that was going to try and do something. JFK. Yeah, JFK. Uh, Roosevelt See, I, was doing I'm a lot of stuff. I'm not a fan stuff. of JFK. Really, yeah, not a fan like, of. I feel him. like he was weak on communism. I think if he would have stayed in power too long, we would end up with I think, communism. I think we were too weak. Dude, I think maybe. He was too weak on it. You think he was in cahoots with Russia or something? No, I don't think he was in cahoots. I just think he was. I think he was just weak. For it, I think he was just weak. What you needed in there was who we got, and I hate to say the way we got him, but LBJ, man, LBJ is. Bro, look. Tough. Let's also be clear on the, this. Is a, this we're gonna save this for another episode, but let's be clear. We know that the Bushes and the uh, uh, and uh, who else was uh, who's the guy that killed him? Uh, killed who? JFK. Yes. 
That's uh, dang it. Why are you asking me? Uh, that oh my God, Oswald, Oswald? Yeah. Uh, Lee, Harvey Oswald? Lee Harvey Oswald. Okay, so God. those I was the Jack Bushes, Ruby, that's kill him. <laughs> the Bushes <laughs> and the saying. Oswalds and a couple other big families that were a part of the oligarchies yep. were supposed to be the ones who planned on his killing, bro. And like, well, Hillary you know, wasn't involved. Uh, I think that was before the Clintons' <laughs> yeah, time. I think she was like five. Yeah, you. I think the Bushes. I'm talking Daddy Bush. I'm talking, you know, yeah. I'm talking the Gray Bush. You feel me? Like, you know, mm-hmm. this this is the old guy. You know what I mean? He just died a couple of years ago. Hey, uh, you know, Herbert Walker Bush. Him, I, uh, yeah, I'm almost positive that he had something to do with all that. I think him and his family. They were big families with big money, man. They wanted him dead because he wasn't doing what they were telling him to do. There's money he was, everywhere. He was being always. rigid about the stuff that was going on. He was talking right. about these little, like, you know, cahoots of uh, different, like, underground societies and different things that were happening in our world that was, you know, truly. And after he made that speech exposing him like that. Yeah, he died. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he was dead. We well, gotta think, brother. Bushes have been a part of that stuff for a long mm-hmm. time, dude. Long time, you know. But let's they're not like, get too like crazy. The Rothschilds. Yeah, we'll, we'll save that one for another one. We got a couple other things to get to. Uh, so the next thing I'm gonna spit at you guys is: if you had to choose straight up, what is better? What is your favorite between these two things, Family Guy or The Simpsons? The Simpsons. I'm going Simpsons all day. I don't know if I'm going to choose The Simpsons. I really I don't know. I'm torn, bro. I'm conflicted about the subject. I'm just, I, I'm never, in this unpopular opinion, mm. never really been a big fan of Family Guy. Bro. Now, American there, Dad, son. I'm all out. Cute like American but Dad. I love nice, American nice. Dad. I like Roger. Dude. He's really cool. Well, it has, it has more like a sophisticated, like, Fair enough. political humor like it that. Does, but, it does. you know, that's right. not the debate. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, this, uh, you could the just Simpsons attribute this to my good. age, you know? Fair enough. Fair Simpsons, enough. I grew up on. Yeah. You know, I remember the original Simpsons, like Matt Groening, like putting it on, like, the Tracy Ullman show. Back Dude, that's day. how he got his. That's yeah, how he got that's his where way. I started yeah, watching. Bro. I was watching Tracy Ullman. People don't know that. That's the whole reason I watched Tracy that's Ullman. Sick, there wasn't dude. anything else on that show that interested well, yeah, me as a kid. Yeah, yeah. He's watching I'm waiting for it because, once again, like Ren and Stimpy, yeah, you know. But, like, I mean, the reason I watched it was for that. And it's like, same with that. It was like I said, Ren and Stimpy. It yeah. was one of those shows that, like, for the first time, was a cartoon that I, as a kid, could be entertained by. But my parents still like it could meant like something to them, well, you know. Yeah. And it was it was uh, edgy. Like it just yeah, oh, yeah, I hate saying sure. edgy because I feel like it's a word we yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, like yeah, it yeah. pushed boundaries for, for real, sure, bro. I mean, like, there's so many things in it that you're like, oh, that was, you know, yeah. <laughs> And then like, political. and then you had South Park, and then you had Family Guy that took it to like a new extreme. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they changed it, bro. Like South Park when that came around, and like, <laughs> you know, everything about South Park was just straight up satire, vulgarness, raunchy. Like just the raunchiest stuff you could think of, bro. Yeah. Like the first episode, the pilot episode was about freaking getting you know probed by aliens, bro. Like yeah. you know, and it what it does to you and stuff, and just weirdo stuff, man. To me, it almost took it too far that it kind of lost me Overkill. a little bit. I mean, I have a moment where I South liked Park, it. I, I liked it. I love Family but Guy too, man. I really then again, do. you know, the reason I like, I mean, like, it keeps going back to my age. I mean, like, yeah. I had a I had a young kid at that point, so yeah. I was like, no, nah, we ain't watching this in the house. <laughs> but like, you know, and that's another thing, bro. Like, you know, you said you didn't really get into Family Guy. I feel like all of these, bro, they all exploded so hard, and like the first five to six seasons you watch yeah. are phenomenal, and then yeah. it just like falls off. You kind of just get bored with it yep. because like the first five or six epi- or uh, seasons of Family Guy, do they're good. Yeah. Like, they are really, yeah, really I mean, funny. Every one of these shows, there's certain episodes oh, or yeah. certain characters that I up. really feel like. The one where they, uh, oh, what was that? When they when they separated from the, because I actually talked about that one in class, when they yeah. separate from the country and, like, create Pitoria, oh, I P- think. Oh, Pitopia? Pitopia. Is, yeah, is, is it Pitopia or Pitoria? One or the other. It might be Pitoria. I don't but, know. But, I mean, like, that one, like, I love that one. That's a really yeah. good one. I mean, there's a He's couple like a of good episodes. He's a sovereign entity. That's yeah. what it's referencing there's some, to. And, and some, of the, some of the flashbacks are, like, like little segments yeah. he has. I mean, that that's probably my favorite part For sure, of Family bro. Guy. It's just the... Uh, and of course, Brian. I Brian's love Brian. hilarious. Brian, dude. like, like I want to hang out with Brian. Oh yeah, bro. Like, if there was a character from Family yes. Guy I got to hang out with, that's it. If I had to pick one, I want to hang out with. It'd probably be. Ooh, I want to say Peter just because he's just ignorant, <laughs> and I love how dumb he is. 
<laughs> he really is. He's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just goofy, bro. But, like, another thing that's so funny about this and so genius, Seth MacFarlane literally does a majority of these voices. Yeah. He does, like, three-fourths of them, so he doesn't yeah. have to pay anybody, bro. This guy banked out on a TV show he didn't have to pay anybody to be on, really. And I was watching Ted and, uh, 1 and 2. You. What? He's from where I'm from in Massachusetts. Yeah, I already know. You told me about that. He used to do stand up. That's pretty cool. Uh, he used to do stand up in the in the city. Down I there. did not know mm-hmm. that. Thank you, Kool Aid. <laughs> Newburyport, Massachusetts. That's pretty cool. I did not know that. Yeah, for sure, dude. Super awesome. And I was watching Ted one and two the other night. And I forgot how funny they are, dude. Yes. I was cracking up. Him and Flash Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen the second one. Dude, it's hilarious. Is it? Get Is it, it good? in, okay. dude. It's okay. real good. Yeah, man. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to probably have to go with Family Guy just because I think Same. it's an age thing. Yeah. I think it's like you said, it's showing the age, like the difference of the generation. Yeah, my son will be really mad at me that I said, said Simpsons. Simpsons. Yeah. He, yeah, he's going to be yeah, with us. He loves, he, yeah, yeah, he Yeah, he he's he going to say Family Guy for sure. Um, and simply because, man, I just feel like Family Guy really pushed the limits even further. That I feel like those limits needed to be pushed, though. Yeah. Because at that time, they were trying to censorship a lot of TV, and they were trying to do a lot of stuff and hide stuff from people. And I feel like Family Guy were, like, using satire but also telling the truth, kind of like South Park. Yeah. You know, like how they did with Trump and, like, him being Mr. Garrison and stuff, like, in <laughs> South Park, you know? Like, it was hilarious, dude. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm saying Family Guy. You said Family Guy, too, and you said Simpsons. No. Yeah. Whoever, you know, whatever you what, guys think. It, this is the episode where Lambert just disagrees with everything. <laughs> <laughs> the, he the say sky nay. Green. The sky's green, he fellas. He say nay. The naysayer. The naysayer. That's right. <laughs> um, so next thing is, my friends, uh, if you had, you know, if you could have lunch with any person, living or deceased, who would it be and why, and it can't be family? Okay. It needs to be somebody you've never even met. It can't be somebody close to you. Because obviously we're going to say, like, you know, I'm going to say my parents. And, you know, you're going to say, you know, your, you know, your dad. And, you know, everybody's going to feel a certain – I don't want it to be personal. I think we should do it as just, like, somebody we, we would like to have lunch with. What do you guys think? Hmm. Man. I'm probably going to say either. It's a toss-up okay. between two. It's either going to be Seth Rogen because I feel like we get along perfectly. Okay. I don't know why. I just feel okay. like we would vibe really well. Or, uh, second, uh, I'm saying Lenny Kravitz, bro, just because he's so cool and I want his cool to rub off on me so I can just be a little bit cool, you know? Like, okay. I just need that type of cool in my life, I feel like. Y'all a lot could, of positive energy. Y'all could compare hair? Like, dude, he's got the best, bro. His yeah. dreads are fat. They're, like, huge, bro. Well, while you're at lunch with him, I'll take his wife out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, honey, I'm just kidding. I Sorry. Love you. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, so I'm saying Lenny Kravitz. I'm saying Seth Rogen. Okay. Straight up. They're both alive, so, I mean, who knows? Maybe I can DM them or something, hit them up. <laughs> What's up, dog? How you doing? Sa, dude. Let's go grab a bite. A sa, yes. dude. A sa. Sa, dude. A sa. Sa. So, who you guys got for having lunch, man? Having a little, having a little, you know, brunch up in here. Getting a little egg and bacon combo. You feel me? Speaking of bacon, bro, I haven't had bacon in, like, six years. Or not six years, six months. Why say six years? Uh, six months. Ate some today. Forgot how good it was. It tasted yeah. real good. Bacon is a drug. But you gotta stay away from that pork, boy. You gotta stay the away from that pork. Swine is divine. Forget that. <laughs> yes. Eat bacon all day. Yes. Don't, bro. Look. Hey, back I'm in the day, my little y'all. brother was a vegetarian. You know what really? I did? Mean? I'm not my, a he vegetarian. Was, he was my roommate. You know yeah. what I did? What? Every day I'd cook, cook bacon. bacon. Oh, that's dirty. Just, and finally, he was like, "Okay, I can't take any more. I break." That's and he dirty. Just, he just came and ate bacon. Dude, and I was dirty. like, more <laughs> <laughs> eat the devil's lettuce. That's right. You know. Corruption. Funny, bro. Anyone dead or alive? Yeah, dead or alive. I, cho- I chose alive just because I don't know. Mm. I really like Seth Rogen and Lenny Kravitz. Man, I'd like to sit down with Vince McMahon, get some business Vince McMahon, ideas. There you go. That's a businessman for Dude, real. Dude, right he's there. for real. Been making moves since forever. XFL, yeah. WWE. Yeah, for real. That's legit, bro. You got Lambo. Man, it, 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 I guess it's just my profession. Mm-hmm. I'm going historic. Nice. How I'm, old we talking? 
old. Like Jesus old? No, not that old. <laughs> not that old. I'm not I'm having lunch like... for Jesus. No offense, Jesus. Yeah. I love you too. Uh, we're talking about Anunnaki old? What are we talking about? We're bro? talking the original that I mentioned earlier. Okay. G.W., George Washington. Ooh, okay. I nice. Wanna, I want to know what he thinks oh, yeah, bro. about us. That's what's up, dude. Can you imagine being able to sit down with him and be him being like, listen. Bro. What were you thinking? So crazy. What were you thinking? So Let crazy. women vote. And I'm like, whoa, 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 G.W., you can't say that anymore, you know? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you mind if I call you GW? Do you like that? Is yeah. that cool? I mean, oh, oh, is that cash money with you? I think you? he'd be mad he's on the $1 bill. Yeah, he probably that. would be angry. For real. Put me in a $1 bill and Ben Franklin, Believe that old that. pervert. You put yeah. him on the 100 Put him on the hundo. <laughs> That's ridiculous. What's going on, bro? So have you guys had to uh, choose an animal to represent yourself? What would it be? I've already right. did this one on did another you? episode. I've been waiting Lambo for this Lambo didn't episode. do it yet. I've been ah, waiting. I didn't do it yet. I was, all right. What, which animal you got? A shark. A shark, boy, because you got to keep swimming? Always. you got to keep moving. moving. Forward. Yeah, yeah bro, that, The way I look busy. at it, like, in you're my life. Not just that. It's not just that. It's like, in life, I've had bad things happen in my life. Fair enough, dude. And if I stop for a minute and dwell on them Amen. And, and let them bring me down, I'm dead. That's you know? true. You'll die. But I just You'll keep stop. moving. I just keep swimming. I'm, I'm like Dory, except I remember Dang. stuff, you know. You just got to keep moving all the time, you <laughs> hey, know. Like my, my gills, you know. It's deep. I, I have to just it's deep. go on. And it's I've actually thought about, like, I have no tattoos right now. And I actually had thought oh, about, getting, about getting getting uh, a tat? shark. Yeah, I'm going to get fins. <laughs> I'm going to fin, uh, get gills, gills put in right here. You're going to get the dorsal on your yeah. back. <laughs> I get anything on my neck. I'm just going to get two big bolts like I'm Frankenstein yeah, or something. That. You know? That's dope. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, a shark just means something to me. Like, yeah. it's not my favorite animal by For far. For sure, yeah. It's just when, when times you. are tough, I'm just like, all right. Let's get you know, it. It's tough. I, I mean, I just got to do something, you know. I, yeah. I got to move. I, For sure, you know, dude. some of the. I mean, I, I get bad news, and it's like, okay, I got to cut the grass. Yeah. I've got to just keep on trucking. Keep on moving, bro. You know? And that's, that's, that's so, like, uh, over the years, a shark has just really stuck. become more more and more yeah. of, of, of me. So Representation of yourself, man, for yeah. sure. And, I'm, I'm uh, glad to finally get this question. I keep seeing it on all the other episodes, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I've been on twice, dude, and you've never asked me yeah, this. Yeah, and speaking of being on twice, man, shout out to my boy Kool-Aid. He is the most appeared guest as of, as hey. of uh, I think, the last episode he did. But, like, yeah, now he's just, like, he's, he's in the running now, bro. Blowing he's y'all out, out the water. What are you at now? Slayer. Four? Is this four? I think this is yes, fourth sir. one, yeah. Dang it. I'm one behind. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, this is your third. This is my third. Nice, bro. Heck yeah, dude. And you gotta plus, get that one up mushroom. We're, we're, it's Mario time. <laughs> I think we're, we're number one at number two, then, I believe. Yeah, believe that's that. That's right. Yeah, that's for real. Justin, uh, he's been this on is like three. like all stars, bro. J- Justin's been on three, so that's uh, you and him are tied. Uh, just me. Well, we just did one literally yesterday, or, you know, uh, two two days, you know, whenever we did I'm gonna it. I'm going to have to assassinate him now. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to JFK this boy. Yeah. We're tired of him. We're going to have to call up. So this brings me to my next question as well, my friends. Right. If you had to fight to the death with a small sword, would you want to fight a bear, grizzly, or a black panther? With a sword to the death. I'm going black panther. Okay. That's what I said, too. What you, what you got? A grizzly bear a grizzly or a black bear. panther? Well, black a grizzly panther. bear is, what, the second largest carnivore animal Mm, no, no, I think it's I, mean, I think it's polar bear, Kodiak, then grizzly. Maybe I could be wrong. Well, either which it's way, still big. It's I'm, still I'm, big. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take my chances against the damn grizzly bear. <laughs> <laughs> so I could be like, I took that big bastard. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all just fought a panther. You're weak. You're weak. You didn't even live. I feel, like, I feel like panther though. I mean, like bear comes at you, it's swinging like from the side. Mauling. It's, it's coming at you. Just panther I mean, gonna leap you. at you, and at least yeah. I can just like. Maybe, to, you know, maybe look, he has a little something, bro. I don't know. They they brought a black panther into my school one time, mm-hmm. and that thing was sitting on the ground, laying. Just Yo. stood up, jumped up, and perched up on top of the backboard. That's crazy, bro. Like they just had a chain on that thing. Like mm-hmm. it ain't gonna, you know. Oh, let me just take off running real quick. I'm gonna eat like ten kids real quick. You know. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's one yeah. thing too. Is like a grizzly bear is a lot of like. A lot of meat, a lot of fat, but yeah. but like so a I'm black saying, panther is like pure bear. muscle. Lean. Yeah, it's like very lean that's muscle. Pure muscle. Yeah, that's for real. But yeah, man, uh, back to the recommendations, guys. Saturday, September fourteenth at nine a.m. Elks Lodge three hundred and fifty will be hosting a charity golf scramble for kids with cancer at the Diamond Links Golf Course in Calixburg, Kentucky. 
Then, on that same day, at 6 p.m., down at the Ashland Riverfront, they're going to be having great food, cold beer, along with the car and bike show. Gate at 5, $20 to attend. Party starts at 6, guys. Uh, Wednesday, September 18th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., the 10th Annual Homeless Veterans Stand Down will be taking place at 624 9th Street, Huntington, West Virginia. Please arrive by 10 a.m. for the opening ceremony and stay for a day of food and fun. Is that one on the on the 14th? Is that the one down the riverfront where, uh, is it Thunderstruck? Yep, the, the that's ACDC the one. The ACDC cover yep, band is going to be there? Yep, that's, that's pretty cool. That's the one, bro. That's pretty cool. I'll yes, be out sir. of town that weekend, yeah. so I will not be able to go. I uh, have the to 14th, say. The 14th, I don't even know if I'm going to be making it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to yeah. make it to these either, simply because I, I don't know if I'm already scheduled to work. Or I don't know if I'll have a babysitter. It's one of those. Yeah. I was looking at my schedule when I when I found out about these. I was like, as soon as my uncle sent them to me, I was looking at my schedule and stuff. I was like, dude, I'm already scheduled to work. Yeah. Like I'm done. I'd be there, but, but I, have I might to be able to make where the, uh, the golf scramble. But I don't have any golf clubs. I'm real bad. 14th, I'll be in Indiana Ooh. watching my boys Notre Dame Get it, son. play hey, New hey, Mexico, look. beat New Mexico. <laughs> my, I, have to, I have to shout out to my brother-in-law who. Uh, he uh, just decided that he wanted to do something fun and have like a bucket trip list, and yeah. uh, he's taking his son and me and my son, and nice. we're gonna go up there for a few days and sick, dude. tour the campus and everything, That's and go sick. watch him play, man. Heck it's yeah, awesome. man! Take a bunch of pictures and post them. Oh, things, definitely, boy. you can guarantee That's that. Legit, dude. And that's always been your favorite team? Oh, yeah. Since I was a kid. Like, when I was really? a little kid, I was like a little Irish kid, you know, a yeah. little redheaded kid. I've always been a redhead, <laughs> so it was like there was nothing in sports represented me, so like yeah. except that. You Boston. Know, that was, yeah. That was the same thing yeah. growing up watching Boston, you know. Yeah. Is that your team in NBA? Uh, who do you like? It was at one point in time when I was younger, yeah. but then as I started watching it more and more, uh, I love a good team basketball, uh, you know, actually passing. So I've always been – not right now because they're yeah. awful – but uh, Sacramento Kings, early two okay. thousands there. You know, Page Vlad- Stoyakovich, Vlad- Vlad- Peja, yeah, uh, uh, White Chocolate, yeah. Jason oh, Williams. Oh yeah, Jason no. Williams, bro. He's so fun to watch. Fire. And of Who course, you know, I'm popular pin in Kentucky because he played for Michigan. Uh, but Chris Webber, probably my favorite yeah, player dude, of all time, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, man. In college, yeah, I like Ohio called, State. Called fake timeout though. It's, <laughs> Everybody messes up. It's I, okay. I, uh, I'd probably say in college, I'm rocking with Ohio State for football, UK for basketball. Uh, obviously, in NFL, you know, shout out to Cleveland, baby. You know what I'm saying? So that's my team. Cleveland Browns they ain't been nothing since like the 1950s, yeah. but they coming back around this year, my dude. We yep. got this. You know what I NFL, mean? NFL, I've always liked Tampa Bay. Man, yeah, Mike, Mike Allstott was one of my favorite plays of all time. A fullback who gets yeah. like 100 yards a game. You Tampa can't. Bay, bro. Yeah, my mom she, and my dad, they was always Dallas fans. Yeah. Man. They like the Cowboys. What's your Kool-Aid? I come from He's uh, New England. We don't want to talk to this kid, yeah, man. Yeah. We don't want to talk to this guy. We're the, the, the come, flake gate I, over hey, here, son. Listen, <laughs> I was rocking with the Patriots before we even started. Ah, I was just playing. Pre Tom Brady. Pre Tom Brady. Yeah. Eric Bledsoe. Bledsoe. Yeah. What did you say, Eric Bledsoe? Yeah, Drew Bledsoe. Oh, I Drew say, Bledsoe. Eric Bledsoe yeah, is a point guard. Yeah, I'm, he was point yeah, guard bro, for the 76ers. Eric Bledsoe. Yeah, I'm tripping. No, but, yeah, uh, he, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Eric Bledsoe played for it, Kentucky. Everything right? Boston Okay, for yeah, me. I'm tripping, yeah. yeah Drew Bledsoe, Boston he went to play Cowboys Boston. after he Boston. Boston. Patriots. You got That's the my Bruins. Yep. Yeah, we're the city of champs. I mean, you got the Bruins, you got the Red Sox. Celtics were. You got the Celtics. Used to be, we still are, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I ain't saying we're. I ain't saying <laughs> we're great, I got this. but we ain't garbage. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, uh, man, Cleveland's year is this year, bro. Granted, man, I don't know if I'll we'll tell be able... you what. I think the Patriots got another run at it. Yeah, we just I mean, signed Antonio Brown, which, by the way, tonight. yeah, literally. Which, by the way, I'm not gonna say I was like I'm not mad about it, mm-hmm. but I mean. Yeah, I think he's a prima donna man, and he had that <laughs> frostbite on his feet. And yeah. you know, I was watching the Raiders documentary on HBO, and For real? like he wasn't even practicing with them because his feet were so messed up from the frostbite. Wow, like, where at? Huh? It, uh, like uh, he was practicing frostbite there in Oakland. in Oakland. Yeah, he got a um. He went into one of those uh, deprivation tank type oh, deals. Oh, okay, okay. And he got frostbite from that. Wow. That's crazy, dude. That's real intense. Yep. Dang. Well, anyways, let's hope Cleveland does good this year, man. I mean, honestly, realistically. Well, I mean, even, even besides just Antonio Brown, we got mm-hmm. Josh Gordon. Yeah. Edelman. Rumors of Gronk coming back midway through the season. That yeah. wouldn't surprise me. That'd be nice. 
He was too last young time, to retire. Last time yeah. we had an elite receiving lineup like that, mm-hmm. we went 16-0. and 0. Yeah. yeah, and that's what I'm going to say. Like, I'll be straight up. I'll be real about it. Obviously, if it comes down to the Patriots in Cleveland for the AFC, right? Their AFC? Yeah, AFC. Uh, so if it comes down to them, obviously New England will probably beat us simply because Man, we're you building. You, you call yourself a fan. You can't. Turn down bro, the squad like that. You gotta be realistic. But bro. I, I think it's part New of this, part the reason why so many people hate New England is because it's like they're They've just that good. Bro, it's not even. It's kind of like NBA. Like I hate the Lakers. Yeah. The reason I hate right. the Lakers because they're just <laughs> too bro, good. It's not even that they're that good. It's because they're established, bro. Yeah. They're New dynasty. England, yes. New England have been good for years. Cleveland yeah. have never been good. So I don't think on they're their like, on their what, next the building, two? two years they've been all right. The last two years they've been decent. And then the, the season before that, we didn't even win one game, bro. We won like two or like two, one game or two games, bro. So that's what I'm trying to get at. We're in, like a, a brand new, fresh built team is not going to beat an established dynasty you know unless we just get you, lucky because it's sports. You, yeah, you know? know it's bad when the Detroit Lions making fun of you. You know, bro, what I'm saying? for like, real. That's what I'm saying, dude. Like that's, rough. that's what I'm getting at. So like, I'm not counting my squad out, my by dude. By the way, screw the Lions. Yeah, forget Detroit, bro. <laughs> Who cares about them? My, our defense coordinator. Had to go be the head coach there. Oh, yeah, for yeah. real. Yeah. But like what I was getting Trisha. at, bro. Screw you. you know, I'm not I'm not counting my team out, but bro, I just gotta be real about it. New England been good for a decade now, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I mean, if you not got longer. The goat. That's what I'm saying, dude. Tom Brady, I hate him, uh, but he's he's sick. You know what I mean? Like he's nice, bro. And that's my thing. I just don't know. I mean, Cleveland could, because like I said, sports, but at the same time, I'm going to be realistic. all the time. Bro. That's true, bro. That's true. We it went is, 16 and 0 and lost to the dang Giants. Yeah. That's true. That is true, bro. Was that the was that the year they beat us with that helmet catch? I don't even when we know. We was like 16 bro. and 0. That was like I think it was. I think it was 4 year. years ago or Some something. BS catch. Every time Maybe we lost five, bro. Every time we lost to the Giants in the Super Bowl, it was yeah. always some BS. Some BS catch like that yeah. helmet catch. Yep. It was uh, or some be at, like some call should have been made or something, and then everyone will. Oh man, I just I don't know. Everyone hates on the yeah, Pats, it and that, it's it like, was listen, that, I rocked with them before we it, started. It was okay. the, it was the helmet okay. catch of uh, 2015. So yeah, okay, a couple few years ago. Yeah, that's you crazy. Getting all worked up over here. Man. I am. <laughs> we better change the subject. You know. <laughs> I'm going oh, to get punched man. over here. No, I'm man, in this. You know, we got, you know, uh, a lot of great things are lined up for these podcasts, man. I'm really, really grateful and thankful for everybody who supports. And I'm also extra grateful and thankful for all the people who are involved, you know, like you guys and, you know, everybody else who is involved, man. You know, what's understood doesn't have to be spoken on. So, But speaking of being involved, yeah, they could go to www.togetherftr.com. Uh, yeah, man. So definitely go check us out. Yep. It's been a sick episode. I really appreciate you guys coming on, man. Uh, Anytime, thanks bro. for having Always me, man. It, yeah. You know, for sure, bro. It's been sick. And uh, you know, like I said, it's episode thirty-eight. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube. Be sure, uh, be sure to share this, like it, drop some comments of your feedback and your opinions on these things. I really appreciate you guys. Have a blessed night. Peace.